Hello, everybody. Um, it's Mr. Smith here, and today we are going to do a little bit more with expected value. We're going to do um, kind of an interesting problem. Uh, well, you guys are going to do it. Uh, we've looked at the distribution for a single dice, which is pretty easy. And every dice had an equal chance of being rolled one out of six. We have already analyzed uh, the distribution for uh, rolling two dice. We know that probability of getting you know, total of two or 12 is one out of 36. We've seen seven is the most likely to be rolled, seven out of 36. Um, but we haven't analyzed the uh, possible totals and distribution for three dice. Uh, so that's what uh, kind of the goal is for today. So we're gonna start by doing a few just kind of warm up problems together. Uh, and then I have a task for you guys. I'll give you guys a few uh, starting hints and get you started and then have you guys finish it off. Uh, but let's let's go. Uh, so um, if you'd like to pause the video and try these warm-up questions, uh, that is uh, totally fine and encouraged. Um, and you can unpause when you're ready. Or as usual, if you'd prefer to follow along with me, uh, that's OK, too. So uh, we're just uh, I've given you guys some distributions here. We're going to find the uh, expected values. And we have talked about our expected value formula. To get that, we take the sum of all the outcomes times their probabilities. So uh, sometimes um, that might you might like making a kind of a, a third column where you multiply the outcome times probabilities. Um, other students might just prefer to slam it into the formula. But for our first one, We have 1 times 0 0.25 plus 3 times 0 0.25 plus 6 times 0 0.25 plus 10 times 0 0.25. Now, some of you may have recognized that you could have just factored out the 0.25 and uh, multiplied 0.25 by whatever 1 plus 3 plus 6 plus 10 is. It is 20. 20 times 0.25. The expected value for this distribution is five. And it is a, because all the probabilities are the same, oh, evidently I can't spell this morning. It is a uniform probability distribution. Um, give, uh, why don't you give B a try? I'll uh, do B as well. Again, pause and unpause when you're ready, or you can follow along with me. This is a solution for part B. So we have one, times a half plus three times a quarter plus five times three sixteenths plus seven times one sixteenth. Um, now, for a problem like this, there's a few talking points. You'll notice the calculation involves we're going to be adding fractions with different denominators, which isn't always like the funnest for everybody. Um, I have talked about uh, why it is actually helpful to leave uh, fractions um, unreduced. Uh, in this particular example, it would just make things a lot uh, things a lot uh, uh, easier. Um, but you can still do it without. Um, uh, most calculators right now, these days, scientific calculators have a fraction capability. Uh, you, uh, you can add fractions very easily on most scientific calculators, calculators now. Um, or you can just grind it out by hand along with me here. Um, so I've multiplied those uh, whole numbers by their fractions. Um, just to save some space, I'll just write uh, to the side here. If I make those all equivalent fractions over 16, I can add them together. 15 over 16 plus 7 over 16. And that's 20, 35, 42 over 16, which is exactly two and a half, but I'm gonna check my mental math here. No, it's not. Uh, it's 2.625, I'm sure glad I checked. <laughs> 6.25, uh, there we go. Uh, so at this point, uh, you guys uh, hopefully are pretty practiced up. You've calculated a lot of expected values, uh, just a couple more there. Um, Here's a kind of a different kind of question. 
So I've given you guys a couple probability distributions here. And I've asked you to find the unknown probability P so that the tables actually represent possible probability distributions. So I'm not asking you to calculate an expected value here. I'm asking you, what does P have to be? So these are probability distributions. And the key is, what do uh, probabilities have to add to in a probability distribution? And uh, if you want to pause and think about that for a moment, you can. Um, but the key is that the probabilities, so if you add up the sum of all the probabilities in a probability distribution, they have to equal 1. So whatever this probability in part A, whatever this probability P is, they have to add to one. And uh, if you add them all up, there is eight of them, eight P, and they have to add to one. And if you solve for P divided by eight, that means that each of those probabilities has to be one over eight, which makes perfect sense. Um, the, the distribution in A is a uniform distribution. All the probabilities are the same. If there's eight outcomes, each of them must be uh, one eighth or as a decimal 0.125. Um, the, uh, we can use a similar method for B. The equation we set up will just look a little bit different. So whatever P is, when we add it to all of the other probabilities, 0.41 plus 0.05 plus whatever P is, has to equal one. And again, this is just another equation to solve. So you can you know, do it in one step or a couple steps. I'm gonna do it in a couple steps here. Um, all of the known probabilities add up to uh, 0.65. And so that means for it to be a legitimate probability distribution, to add to one, that final probability should be one minus 0 0.65 or 0 0.35. Um, so just a different type of question, just to get ourselves warmed up, our minds back on expected value. Um, I wanted to do that to set up the uh, little task I have for you guys today. So it's a, a fun little question to play around with. Um, it's uh, somewhat challenging, but not too overwhelming that um, uh, you guys can't handle it. So let's uh, dive in here. So um, we have already looked at rolling one dice and two dice, but what about rolling three dice? Uh, what's the uh, distribution look like? Um, and uh, what would the expected value of rolling three dice be? Um, some hints to get you started. Well, actually, first thing. So um, um, whether you're in my Acton uh, class, like the one I teach face-to-face -face or did or was teaching face-to-face -face, or my online class, I want you guys to um, to give this a try and uh, submit it to me. Instructions for submitting, I'll talk about later. Uh, I just want to remind you guys that right now, with the way things are, uh, things you guys can su uh, submit to me, um, they may be marked. Uh, they may not be marked. Uh, that mark might count towards some grade uh, at the uh, at the end of this, uh, and it, it might not. But the purpose is for uh, this is for uh, learning. Um, so I am going to have a look at these and give you guys feedback. And if that's all that happens, then that's great because learning happened. Um, you don't, we don't necessarily have to get a mark for everything in these times. Um, so, uh, uh, as I await instructions from, um, both the online, um, administration and my, uh, the, the school board with respect to marks and evaluating, um, um, I'm just going to leave it open-ended. So it may be marked, it may not be marked. Oh, but the purpose is for learning, and you'll get feedback regardless. So, um, what I have you, what I'm going to have you guys uh, do is submit a table of all the outcomes and their probabilities. I provided a PDF of uh, such a table that you can just fill in as your finished product. But also, once you have that table, I want you guys to calculate the expected value for this distribution. Now, um, via practice and lessons, we have found out the following. The expected value for one dice is three and a half, 3.5. And that just comes from adding, you know, the, the, the six outcomes, one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six, and dividing that by six. 
Um, the expected value for two dice we have done at some point, either in a lesson or um, in um, assigned practice, is seven, which made sense for us because seven was in the middle. It was the most likely. And then we had a symmetric distribution for two dice. Um, so uh, what you may notice is kind of every dice has um, an average value of 3.5. So for one dice, that gives you 3.5. For two dice, that gives you seven. So for three dice, that definitely gives you a strong hint about what the expected value for three dice should be. So you can almost kind of check your answer when you're done. Um, uh, so I'm going to have you guys uh, get a table, calculate the expected value, and I just would love to see uh, your rough work as well. So um, uh, some hints for you guys to get started. Remember, the number of ways to roll three dice. Well, the number of ways to roll one dice was six. The number of ways to roll two dice was, you know, six using the FCP, six ways to roll the first dice, six ways to roll the second. That's 36. The number of ways to roll three dice, well, there's six options for each dice. And that gives you 216. There are 216 possible outcomes for rolling three dice. Six times six times six. Another hint is that the probabilities, just like we reviewed earlier in the warm-up, will have to add to one. So it's another way to check your answer. Your probabilities should add up to 216 out of 216. Um, all that said, uh, let me get you started with uh, some hints. Um, so uh, as you can see, I've given you guys just a section of the distribution table, and uh, I'm going to fill this section out completely with you guys. So using our first hint, or using, let's just actually look at three. Three is the lowest possible total you can get for three dice. Um, that occurs. So for to get a total of three, uh, there's only one way that can happen. I'm just going to show my rough work. It's if you get one, one, and one. There is like, you know, there's one way for this to happen if all three dice are ones. So the probability of getting three is one out of 216. Uh, in the same way, a total uh, to get a total of 18, you need uh, to get a six on each dice. And there is one way to do that. One out of 216. So we've already got the total of three done, the total of 18 done. Um, remember, and this is one of the hints I gave you, your total for whatever you get should be 216 out of 216. So let's go on to a total of four. All right, so uh, to get a total of four, uh, there's only one possible combination of numbers that make a total of four. And this will be part of the task for you guys is figuring out what combination of numbers can make your total. But the only way to get a total of four is if uh, one of the dice is one, the other dice is one, and the uh, third dice is a two. That's the only way to get a total of four. You can think about it. Um, but the, the dice could be in a different order, right? It could be one, two, one, or two, one, one. So if we use our organized counting methods, how can you arrange two ones and a two? There's three numbers, so three factorial divided by repeating ones. There's three ways to, um, to um, uh, three ways to order these guys. So there's a three out of 216 chance of getting a total of four. I'm going to do a little bonus one with you guys, 17. This is going to illustrate a property that will cut your work in half. For a total of 17, there's one possible combination of numbers that works. It's if two of the dice are six and one of them is five. And in the same way, there is three ways to order these. So maybe what you're seeing, or maybe you're, you've made this guess, and I will just confirm that this table is symmetric. That's going to cut your work in half. 
so that when we do our work for the probability of rolling a total of five, you'll have your answer to a total of 16. And as I said, that's going to cut your work in half. So you can do the, the first half of the table, and then you'll know what the second half looks like. So it's going to save you guys some time. Uh, but let me do a total of five with you. All right. So this is where uh, some thinking, some problem solving, just scratching things out and trying things on your own is going to come in. You guys are going to have to figure out the total number of ways to make combinations of these numbers. So what combination of numbers on a dice can make five? And there's two combinations of numbers. A one and one and a three can make five. But there's also a second way to do it. A two, a two, and a one can also make five. And that's it. The If one of the dice is a four, it's impossible to make five. That is the only two ways you can make five. And as we discussed earlier, I won't show the calculation again, but with two repeating numbers, the number of ways to arrange those guys is three. The number of ways to arrange a two, a two, and a one, again, it would be three factorial over three factorial. That's three ways, giving you six ways to get a total of um, uh, five. Um, so again, that means you also now know the probability for uh, getting a total of 16. And uh, maybe as just one more last uh, spoiler hint for you guys, maybe just briefly talking about it, getting a total of six. Um, one of the ways to do that, I won't give you all of them, but one of the ways to do that is getting a one, a two, and a three, all different. In this case, the number of ways to arrange uh, a one, a two, and a three uh, is three factorial. So there's you know six ways that the dice could come out with a one, a two, and a three. Um, so uh, there are other ways that you can make a total of six. I have shown you guys how to determine the number of ways to rearrange those you know, combinations of dice. I've given you guys uh, the very strong hint that this table is symmetric. That's going to cut your work in half. Your total should be 216 out of 216. If it's less, then you've missed some cases. And I would love to, you know, if you can't figure out what you're missing, I would love to help you out. Just reach out to me. Um, and again, you know what your expected value should come out to. Every dice is 3.5. One dice is 3.5. Two times 3.5 was seven. That gives you a very strong clue about what the expected value for three dice is. Um, it's my hope that you guys have a bit of fun doing this task. Uh, stay busy. Keep your mind sharp. Um, I would like you guys to submit it. Um, so my online class, um, you will guys will submit it the usual way. Get a PDF of your work. You can uh, submit it via the Dropbox on Brightspace. Um, my acting class, um, I'm going to uh, set up a, um, a way for you guys to submit that on the Google Classroom uh, just to save my inbox and not get an email for each one of you guys. And I'll have instructions on kind of how to do that as well. Um, but I just want to remind you guys, um, you shouldn't be stressed about uh, marks with this. Obviously, you should try to do your best. Obviously, you should try to present your best work and get things correct. Um, but um, the focus right now is on learning and uh, I will assess. And again, I'm not sure if the mark will count. If not, there's still a lot of factors to uh, a lot of information to come out. Um, all right, guys. So have fun with the task. Good luck. And we'll see you guys online.